time now to check out Yamaha's all-new YZF750R. This summer, Yamaha jumps back into the hotly contested 750 sport bike class with a stunning sports machine, derived from its limited edition OW01 Superbike Racer. Once round, the YZF reveals a race replica brimming with leading-edge sport bike technology. Highlights include a modified version of the liquid-cooled five-valve slant block engine used in the OW01. There's also an aluminum Delta Box frame said to be identical to the factory's YZF Works Endurance Racer. Up front, you'll find an inverted fork and a pair of six-piston calipers gripping 320mm discs, while out back, there's an impressive braced aluminum swing arm complete with an adjustable shock and rising rate linkage. And don't forget the 4-to-1 exhaust equipped with EXA. This week, contributing editor Larry Tate invited special effects man Dan Gibson to sample the YZF to see just how special the 750 really is. I feel I have a winner here. I feel that uh, it's a very competent chassis. They've left this out of the market since 87 and I think they've got a very wonderful bike here. Short, agile, as you said, crisp, um, a wonderful motor. This motor has always been gorgeous in my eyes. Uh, the five valve motor and I think they've just done a wonderful job. I think they will have a hot bike here. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff on it that really comes directly off the last YZF racers, uh, particularly the frame, which is uh, this massive set of beams coming back from the steering head here is, is directly based and very close in measurements and so on to the YZF endurance racers that they used at Suzuka and so on. Uh, they claim it's, it's a lot stronger, a lot stiffer than the OW01 Superbikes were, so that's you know, really a good place to start for building any kind of a mm -hmm. 750 sport bike. It starts to wail when you open it up. It's pretty quiet when you're driving around, and I guess that's a function of the size of the muffler. I mean, it is a huge can. Everything on this bike is really big. You know, it's, it's a very tiny motorcycle, but the frame is really big, the brakes are really big, the, the swing arm is gigantic, and, and there's huge canister muffler on it. The stuff that they needed to make it work well is, is big and strong and there's nothing else there. It's quite linear, quite strong. It's, it's biased toward top end. I mean, it's definitely intended as a race motor, you know, as far as you can see. It has that top end rush. Yeah, it starts to come on not much below 5,000. It starts to pick up toward six and it's really strong from seven, seven, five on up from there. It really starts to haul. And uh, you mentioned the X up valve and the exhaust system. I think that's really what makes it work as well as it does down lower. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't it really stumble or log. Yeah, it just being it's a, not quite as strong. Being a motor that does rev to 13,000, I'm imagining you would lose, without the X up, you would lose some low speed tractability and this is, seems to give it back and it, uh, it seems to work fine on the street. The bike feels almost like a 600 in terms of size, it feels very short coupled, you're, you're sort of almost over the front wheel when you're riding it, you know, it feels like a little bike that way, like the, like the FZ600 does or the FZR600. It's actually almost two inches shorter than the OW01 Superbikes, which is a, a lot, you know, on a bike this size. It's, it's one of the shorter ones on the market now, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you feel that on the road, that the transitions from turn to turn, from side to side, it, it, it's effortless. I took the fast Yamaha course with the FZR 600s, and I thought those were a wonderful bike. I thought nothing of road holding, braking, that didn't enter my mind because we were learning the course. This is the same way. You don't question the ability of the bike. It does what you want it to do. They've gone to six piston calipers this year, which a couple of the other manufacturers are in Yamaha also on, on their new GTS bike are using six piston calipers. I guess the reason is to, they've, they've got more swept area without making a much bigger disc. If, if you look at the disc itself, you can see that there's a very narrow band at the edge that's actually used as friction area, but with the three pads, you've got a very long swept area, so it just gives you an unbelievable size of swept area, and it just will stand on its nose. It's a fantastic set of front brakes. Really, really good. What I find really rough is the seat pad. Yeah. It's incredibly hard. Now, I'm imagining this thing has very low kilometers on it. That will soften up with some age. As it is right now, it's really hard. <laughs> you could go real fast in this thing, and it... You should be very careful where you ride it because you could get yourself in deep trouble very, very easily. It, it's a big smile bike, no question about it. Everybody always wants a motorcycle with a, a, a highly braced swing arm, with big wide wheels, with big sticky tires, with good brakes front and back, with the, the best uh, forks, with the best shock, and you've got it. Just to recap, on the downside, we really did have to get picky here when you consider that this is a hard-edged sports machine 
For instance, Dan complained about the rock-hard seat. Larry added that the passenger pillion hidden under the race replica cowling would be uncomfortable as well. And even though this was a pre-production model, we felt the fit and finish could have been a tad better. On the upside, Larry just loved the one-finger stopping power. Dan gave the bike an A+, in the handling department, and both riders loved the YZF's quick revving engine.